Welcome to SKNIS Perspectives, an interactive program of the St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service, aired weekly on this radio station. Coming up. They did very well, uh, actually better than some of the officers we see in the United States. Police officers excel in advanced motorcycle operation training as the force strategizes the introduction of a highway patrol unit. Plus, Ameripol, which is the Latin and Central America and Caribbean version of Interpol, they would like me to be installed as the executive secretariat. More international recognition and commendation for the work of Commissioner of Police Selvin G. Walwin. I'm Ian Richards, and this is Perspectives. Hello and welcome. Last week, 18 members of the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force and a traffic warden were trained in advanced techniques of operating a motorcycle. Regular listeners may recall that the 16 cycles were donated a few months ago by a citizen who was impressed with the job the police was doing under the command of Selvin G. Walwin. Commissioner Walwin told us that having an advanced course for officers was a logical step. We requested from our international law enforcement sister agency, the Orange County Sheriff's Office, where I retired, for an instructor who is specialized in police motorcycle training to come to the Federation and train 20 of our officers to use the 16 motorcycles that were donated by an investor in the Citizenship by Investment program. The sergeant came here from Orange County and he trained our officers in the basic police motorcycle riding instruction skills and then also taught them some advanced techniques. Sergeant Steve Fortier conducted the course from June 1 to 3 at the police training complex. I've been in law enforcement in the United States for 29 years. I am currently a sergeant of a uh, motorcycle patrol unit for Orange County, Florida, which is uh, Orlando. Uh, Tell us a bit about your involvement in this course. How did it come about? I previously worked with Commissioner Walwin in the United States at the Orange County Sheriff's Office, and he had contacted a member of our training section looking for a trainer who was uh, willing to volunteer their time to come down here and do the training. The course is three days. We actually condensed it a little bit, did longer days on Monday and Tuesday and a shorter day today. Give us a sense of some of the areas that you would have covered with the persons. We covered what we call close cone exercises, which simulate if you're riding within a crowd or a area that's very tight in space where a car could not drive. So the cones simulate obstructions. We also covered mounting the motorcycle correctly, getting on and off the motorcycle, proper care of the motorcycle, riding in traffic. We did exercises this morning. We went out on the uh, roadways and did road exercises. And one of the exercises you videotaped out here was called the break and escape. It, it trains the officer that if you're riding along and you see an obstruction, how to handle that obstruction to break and then ride around it. And of course, an evaluation is an important part of any program. How would you say the students here did? They did very well. Uh, Actually better than some of the officers we see in the United States. These officers were very young, very eager, very determined to do what we were going to do. And that helps progress the uh, training very quickly. They're very dedicated to what they do. They have a lot of concern in their heart and they're happy to do their jobs. These motorcycles will be placed into what I envision as a highway patrol for the Federation, both St. Kitts and Nevis. And we are sending four of these motorcycles to be used in Nevis. And we are going to use six of the motorcycles here in St. Kitts specifically for traffic enforcement on the country roads. We have seen an increase in the deaths and serious bodily injuries caused by motorists and also by the taxi drivers, the taxi vans. And it's time that traffic enforcement is stepped up, that those who are using our roads do so in a responsible manner. And these motorcyclists who have been trained will be part of that highway patrol team and their main job will be traffic enforcement on the highways of this federation. 
number 761 comes to the Stevens at the station at the Charleston Police Station and attached to the bike patrol. Number 670 comes to the Mauritia Police Station at the Police Station attached to the Telecommunication Department. An important component of the training was the inclusion of officers from various postings across St. Kitts and Nevis. Number 727, Kevin Pastor, stationed at the Bastia Police Station and attached to the Bike Patrol. Number 732, Robert Michael, attached to the Police Station. What you have seen is a cross-section of the police force. We believe that officers should be cross-trained. That is one of my initiatives since I've been here. We have been training officers from all of the outstations, for instance, in fingerprinting, in police crime scene photography, different areas of law enforcement where we don't have to wait for a specialized unit to come. Every officer should be a police station by himself. That is the concept under which I was trained, and I'm trying to present that here. So we had people from Telecom. We had people from CRO. We even had a traffic warden because these are people, if push comes to shove in an instant, we can pull people in and don't have to worry about having to train them afresh. They have already been trained, and that training is in reserve. While visiting the training, I was able to sit down with Constable Rodwell Mickle, as well as Coretta Mills, who stood out as she was not a police officer, but was also the only female that signed up to be trained. Well, when I heard of the bike patrol that was going to be introduced to us, I found that it was some excellent, so I decided I would come to the course after getting word from the commissioner. And what gave you the courage to go and approach the commissioner, considering that you're the only female here and the fact that you're the only one who's not a police officer? Well, I'm no stranger to bikes. So I approached him after hearing about it, giving the OK. I registered and came on the course. How did you find out about the course? It was advertised. They were selecting riders for the bikes. I was in the guard room, the Bastia police station at the time, and I showed interest and I was selected. You mentioned that you ride motorcycles. At least you know how. How would you say your skills have been enhanced and compared to what you knew then to what you know now? Well, I can say I knew how to ride before. Now I know how to ride. We were taught how to maneuver around corners. We were taught how to do abrupt stops and then continue moving without any fatal accidents. I can say that I am a better rider today than I thought I was previously. How would you say you found the sessions? It was very interesting, very informative, and we all learned a lot, and we will do our best as we go out in our various communities. It was quite challenging, but informative. Does it mean anything to you being the only woman that was trained to ride on the first course? Yes, it means a whole lot, because then it shows that when you're in an organization, you can do whatever challenge is set before you. And so moving forward now, how would you use what you would have learned here today in your duties going forward? Well, the organization is planning to have um, a highway patrol. So being on this course will enable me to execute the patrol more effectively. Any plans to become a full-time police officer? Not at the moment. I love being a traffic warden. Talk to us a bit about the inclusion of having the traffic warden because I recognize that she not only the person who was not a police officer, but she was the only female as well. Under my administration and under Prime Minister Dr. Denzel Douglas, we have made advances in recognizing women as being a viable part of the police force. To the extent, if you will remember, in the history of the police force, 53 years later, the first female superintendent was put in place. And Dr. Denzel Douglas, when I brought the information to him, he wholeheartedly said, yes, and do we have any other women that you think can be in that position of leadership with the police force? And I identified three other women, and he has also submitted those names to the Police Service Commission for them to approve so we will now see three new female police inspectors. At the present time, there is only one 
and that is unfair. He has acknowledged that. The gender and equality community agrees with me, with my stance in promoting women within the agency. We have seen women in key areas, such as in the SSU, there's a female sergeant. At the SSU, we have seen a female sergeant in charge of the Delta Squad. We have seen a female sergeant in charge of the SVU, Special Victims Unit. And we have just promoted a female inside of the Violent Crimes Unit on the St. Kitts level. There was one in Nevis. We now have one in St. Kitts. So females are a very vital part of law enforcement. We are not antiquated. We will not go backwards. We will go forward. And I have the full support of the present government in making sure that women are well represented within the police force. And important to note, they're all qualified. These women are highly qualified, very qualified, and very well trained. Let's switch gears a bit now. There's a training coming up also. It deals with ballistics. What can you tell us about that? Well, this is a course that is supported under the initiatives by the Caribbean Basin Security Initiatives. Uh, Major Coleman, who is here on loan to us from the U.S. Department of Justice, uh, just recently completed a course in forensic nursing where they were able to teach our police officers and nurses, the medical professionals, in conjunction with Windsor University, on how to better prepare cases for presentation in court to protect our youngest nationals who are our children. As you are aware, we have a lot of unreported or underreported cases of carnal knowledge cases, child molestation cases here in the Federation, and we have made a stand since I've been here, and that's why we created SVU, to deal with this. As a matter of fact, last year, the U.S. government, they paid for myself, ACP Queely, and two of the women from the SVU to go to Dallas to train. Along with us went the gender affairs, Sharon Rattan PS, and also the lady from Nevis in that division. We all went up there because we wanted to show that this was a serious issue in the Federation and we were not sweeping things under the table. We just had a police officer, though he has not yet been sentenced, was convicted for that same thing. And we are showing the people that we don't care who it is. As long as the elements of the offense is met, we will investigate and we will prosecute. Now with reference to the course that you ask about, this is a ballistics training course where we are doing what is called shell casting. The basic concept is that when we go to a crime scene, and I don't want to give away too much of it, we are now better able to prepare ourselves on how to identify and deal with the issue that we are facing in this federation. Commissioner, since you've been here, there of course has been a number of criticisms and also some recognition for the support that you've done. Does that mean anything to you? Well, I understand that on the Sunday, people were saying, Hosanna in the highest. And on Friday, they were saying, crucify him. I only ask those who are criticizing me, for whatever reason, ask them to look at when I first came here and to look at now and see if there's any difference. And if there is no difference, then they're justified. And as we spoke about recognition, it's important to note that recently our office received some information that you were going to be recognized by the Mexican Federal Police. Well, the Mexican Federal Police is having their anniversary, I think it's the 85th anniversary, but the president of Mexico, through the police commissioner general of Mexico, has invited me to Mexico to accept a medal based on the quality of leadership and the change he has seen in the Federation since I have been here, and to also express the appreciation for the partnership that we have as two countries, but more so because of the fact of the leadership change and the progress in leadership and training that they have seen within the Federation. And when will you be basically accepting that award? Um, that will be soon, but for security reasons, I will leave the dates out. In addition to that, Commissioner, I understand that there are some good news that basically would have more or less spun off of that in connection to it. What would you, Can you tell us about that? Well, I have also received an email from the Mexican authorities advising me that Ameripol, which is the Latin and Central America and Caribbean version of Interpol, 
uh, they would like me to come to Bogota, Colombia, to be installed as the executive secretariat of Ameripol. And what does that position entail? Well, it will be part of the hierarchy of the organization, and it gives our federation a face and a voice in making law enforcement decisions within Central and Latin America. How would this affect your duties here as commissioner? It will not. Um, recently, I was in Bogota at a meeting with uh, one of the members of the Defense Force, Lieutenant O'Dane. We were invited there to study and to learn new security measures that are going to be beneficial to our ports here in the Federation. We were the only two who spoke Spanish between the police and the military, and we were invited. We were there for three days. We had no translators, and everything was done in Spanish. Are there any final comments that you'd like to leave us with, Commissioner? I want the people of the Federation to know that I came to this Federation because there was an issue. I can't do everything by myself. I still need the public support. You have been calling my number. I know sometimes you don't get me. It's not that I don't want to speak to you. It's because other people are calling, so I can't answer two people at once on the same line. I would like for you to please continue to use the Crime Stoppers number, 1-800-8477. That has been very effective. We have been solving cases because of you, and I want to thank you so much for all the information that you are giving. Remember, when you call, you may be eligible for a reward and that the person on the other end does not know you. All they see is 869, so they'll know it's coming from St. Kitts, but they don't know whose phone number, they don't see a phone number, and they don't know who's calling. They will give you a number that you can use in case we have to pay a reward. We have paid our rewards since we've been here. We paid a reward for a, a recent robbery, so that was good. So I'm asking you to please continue using that because you are helping us to solve crime and preserve the peace and safety of our country. I was born here. I was born in Bastyr. I am a native of this country. My grandparents are from Nevis, and I'm from up the village. My interview with Commissioner of Police, Selvin G. Walwin. Before we leave, we are pleased to present excerpts from a recent statement by Commissioner Walwin about the recent incidents in St. Kitts and Nevis. I'm Commissioner C.G. Walwin, of the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force. Over the last 30 days, I have noticed an increase in the violent rhetoric within the Federation by some persons who are either seeking public office or who are supporting those seeking public office. I have asked all sides to reduce the rhetoric as the hype causes problems in policing and community interactions. This was manifested in the recent malicious damage to the motor vehicles of persons attending a local political meeting in Sandy Point last Thursday. The two stabbings the following Friday when the persons diverted from the approved route for the recent march and the illegal and unruly gathering in front of government headquarters and the Bastia police station. All of this was punctuated with a very violent set of rhetoric made by a prominent member of a newly formed political party. This person later recanted the violent utterances. My fellow citizens, nothing is gained by adult men and women displaying such negative behavior in a society that is known for being peaceful and loving. I have reached out to all parties and I'm calling for an immediate stop to the rhetoric of violence from all those who are doing it. The police is the last bastion of order between those who would seek anarchy and those who are law-abiding. I believe the police exercised extreme patience and acted properly during the last political march by the political opposition. The police are here to uphold the law and to keep citizens and residents safe. It is very evident that they are persons whose sole intent is to create chaos. I wish it to be clear to all that the police will enforce the law and will continue to maintain peace and security 
at all times. No unlawful behavior will be tolerated. And I want to make it very clear, the police will not be intimidated. Therefore, I'm appealing to all, please, I ask you, please abide by the law. This is Commissioner C.G. Walwyn. God bless you, and God bless the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. And that's our program this week. I'm Ian Richards. Thank you for joining us. We're pleased that you joined us for this edition of SKNIS Perspectives. Join us every week at this same time on this radio station. This program is produced by the St. Kitts and Nevis Information Service.